Okay, if we start with introductions, um, I guess seeing as I'm here first and still speaking, I might as well go first. So uh, nice to meet you. I am Fiona Turner, recruiter on the team at Dovetail Games. Uh, I've been with the company for five years now, so uh, hardly seems possible in recruitment for three and a half as well. So welcome. Hi, I'm uh, Angie Clement. I work as the development people manager and I've been at Dovetail for uh, coming up to a year now. Hello, I'm Jack. I'm a junior graphic designer on the creative team, and I've been here about a year and a half now. Uh, so if we go around as you are on my screen, uh, Jack. Yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, there are other Jacks here, that's why I asked. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm Jack. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm an assistant development manager in uh, Dovetail Games. Uh, my role involves to uh, create schedules uh, about the various projects, uh, to correct reports, to uh, also uh, create reports and uh, to prioritize uh, on a daily basis which tasks uh, the team uh, is going to do. Uh, in a few words, I would, uh, I would say I'm uh, the control uh, tower of the airport, uh, which uh, manages the flying airplanes. Great. Thanks, Jack. Nat? Sorry, couldn't find the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Um, so hi, I'm Natalie. Um, I'm the community manager here at Dovetail. Um, I've been here for just over a year now. Um, basically, as the community manager, um, I work uh, very closely with the community. I listen to their feedback. Um, I collect their feedback and then pass that on to the developers um, and the internal teams. Um, the community management team is often known as like the bridge between the player and the developer. So. Great, thanks, Nat. Claire. Uh, Claire, Claire, we can't hear you. <laughs> uh, could we go to Joanna next? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Joanna Winskill, and I am um, the business this admin apprentice at Dovetail Games. Um, so I have a dual role across facilities and HR. Um, so I work on reception on a Monday and Friday, and then the rest of the week I work um, within HR on all people basis. Claire, are we good? No. Nope. <laughs> uh, try and leave and come back. Uh, James. Hello, I'm James. I'm our Director of Community here at Dovetail. I've been here for about seven months now and that has taken most of my spiel. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I look after Nat and the rest of the team, support them uh, and uh, manage and direct our community operations across um, all of our franchises. And that includes everything from social media to influencer management to community management to customer support. Cat. Hi, I'm Kat. Uh, I've been here for about a year and a half and I'm the licensing and contracts coordinator. So basically my role is uh, going through all of our contracts that we have with uh, third party developers and contractors, uh, basically just ferrying them around and making sure they get signed and updating databases. Yeah, nice to meet you all. Adam, love the background, Adam. Hello, thank you. It's uh, part of my little propaganda. <laughs> I'm a junior 3D artist and I'm the only one who uses this piece of software uh, in personal <laughs> work. So I'm just like here in the background for, <laughs> you know, for everyone to slowly eat away at them. Uh, yes, I'm a junior 3D artist with a sort of predominant focus on environments. I've been at Dovetail for about 10 months, so very, very fresh. Um, and I work in the preservation crew every now and then lending hand to the environment team. So if I'm not working on improving all the content, I'm helping with the creation of new content stations and the scenery and such. Uh, Sam's just said in the um, comments, uh, 3DS Max. So he just said nice, so a bit of appreciation there. If anyone else, else has got questions that they want to ask, feel free to write in the chat or unmute yourself. We're more than happy to ask as we go along. Um, as I said, today is, is kind of just for you to find out uh, a little bit about uh, what we're doing here, what individual roles across different disciplines um, are doing throughout the company, and just to help 
with any advice that we have to help you kind of land your dream job, dream job as well. Um, so yeah, questions are always welcome. Um, so James, let's start with you. Is this your dream job? <laughs> what a question, eh? Uh, <laughs> so um, I think so. I think for me, um, I've always liked being able to communicate with people. I've always liked being able to talk. Um, I'm sure over the course of an hour, you're probably going to find this out about me. Um, and I like to be able to, yeah, so communicate with with other people and with people who um, play our games and and ultimately are the ones that are kind of providing the the income through which provides our our salaries. And um, it's really important for games companies. Um, I mean, games are becoming far, fast becoming a a huge cultural part of of all um all geographies at the moment and it's really important for games companies to have a really strong relationship with their communities have kind of the opportunity to um humanize the the brands to to the people who are going to be playing your games um and for me that 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 feels like a really worthwhile um uh, passion and uh worthwhile endeavor for for us as a company but also for, for me i love being able to manage uh, the team i love being able to lead the team and i love being able to sort of have my fingers in as many different pies as possible you probably noticed uh from my job description i've got quite a few different areas which we focus in on so i love being able to kind of try new things learn new things and within community management no two days are ever the same which is great because you never wake up knowing what you're gonna hit uh, every morning which is quite nice Great. Um, so I always like to use the uh, example of, of Jack. Jack joined us, uh, was it a couple of years ago? About a year and a half, yeah. Yeah, so Jack joined us for work experience for a couple of weeks um, and then did a fixed term contract with us and, and now has a perm role. And I always like to use you as, as an, a kind of an example and say how you've really pushed yourself to get into the, the industry that you want to be in and your dream role. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got in and persevered <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure thing so as you said yeah i uh i had an interview uh just over a couple of years ago um with you um for a role and obviously i wasn't accept- successful um but i didn't let that be the end of it i you know followed up with emails of like you know would you be happy to discuss uh you know why i was successful you know um could i perhaps come in and do a short stint of work experience with you um you know, to help with applying for future roles in all other places. Um, and so I did that and it was, it was really eye opening and really useful for me. And, uh, then not long after that, I was, I was phoned up and, um, I was offered another role, which turned out to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think that's a great story and, and it really does show that if you persevere, um, and keep plugging away and keep in touch with people and networking is so important um then you know you really can still despite getting a no at the time still get into the job that you want um so Kat how did you get into to the games industry hello um well it took quite a while uh after uni I did a degree in computer animation arts uh, I worked in a bar for about two years so there was this long period where I was feeling quite uninspired and uh, my job was physically exhausting so I uh, I found it really tough to break in but eventually I applied for a I think it was a marketing assistant role I can't remember uh, which I unfortunately I didn't get uh, but sure enough, I got a call back from Fiona at some point <laughs> uh, saying that there was another job uh, in third party. It wasn't licensing. And uh, I applied for the third party. It was a project coordinator role. And uh, I managed to get that one. I learned a lot from my interview in the first round when I interviewed first and I didn't get through <laughs> or didn't get um, the job. So I tried to acknowledge any mistakes or anything I'd done wrong the first time round. Uh, and then took that with me to my second interview and really tried to uh, nail it in. Uh, and so I think uh, I think a few weeks later, there was a little test I had to do where I had to kind of analyze some fake data and uh, kind of answer some questions just to test out how uh, I work. And uh, it was through that when I managed to um, eventually get the job. Uh, so, yeah, it was quite a long uh, a long time I wasn't someone who got out of uni immediately went into industry uh, but that tends to happen sometimes 
I had friends from my course at uni who also work at like other game studios, great game studios, and they went through the same thing. Um, there's, it's, don't be downhearted if you don't immediately get a job. Uh, we all end up doing it. And I think if you work a normal, um, sorry to say, crappy job, you really appreciate when you do actually get your job in industry and you really feel so grateful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's definitely, um, I'm, I mean, that's how I've gone. So, yeah. There's a definite theme of perseverance here, isn't there? Just kind of keep plugging away and um, again, speaking to people and make that first impression because even though a role that you might not necessarily be going for is not exactly suited, but if you impress somebody in interview um, and then subsequently a test, then it just goes to show that you can get in uh, and still end up doing a job that you want to do. Um, Claire, do you want to test to see if we can hear you? No, but stay there and listen to us. <laughs> stay with us. Stay with us. <laughs> um, Adam, t tell us about your, your experiences getting in. Uh, well, I think I'm not going to I'm not going to be much different, even though obviously I work in a different area, uh, working with the art team. But I would say that perseverance is the number one keyword. I don't know how many jobs I applied to. Uh, and how many times I've been ghosted by employers not heard back or did the art test and just been told it's great no uh, without any feedback so that's that's definitely something to to keep in mind because games industry is not easy to get get into at least at least on the art side um, but yeah for uh, for dovetail I applied among many other studios because I was sort of searching out for studios that would have a lot of environment work and well you drive a train for, for a very long sort of piece of track. That's a lot of environment you go by. So in my mind, a lot of environment to build. Um, and a few weeks later, um, when I've all but forgotten, because I've gotten used to being ghosted by, by studios so much, I've got a call from Fiona. And uh, it was just a regular afternoon and it completely um, it took me by surprise. And I probably rambled without much sense. And uh, yeah, we've we've agreed for a uh for an interview with Derek and Adam Adam who's also Adam my manager uh, so it was it was out of the blue just because of how long I've been applying for for jobs and and sort of come to terms with the fact that that I'm probably not going to hear from 99 percent of those so it's yeah it's a good mindset to have to just keep going because you'll you'll get it when you least expect it I think how did you ever find the interview process um, is there any advice you could give people for kind of interviewing with us, particularly an art, art kind of interview? Well, to me, it was the one of the most stressful preparations for the interview because I really cared about getting this job. And it was sort of one of the first interviews that I've ever gotten for studios because I would just get to an artist and then never hear back or, or, or just not get through to the interview. Um, but for as stressful as the build-up was, the interview itself was the, I don't want to say the easiest, but the most enjoyable job interviews I've ever had. Because it, what, it, what it boiled down to was three people who love what they do, sitting down and talking about what they love doing, which is art. Because obviously, Derek being, um, being our uh, you know, lead for art... It, you can talk to someone and for me as a, as a someone who didn't go to uni for it i was i was a self taught person just sitting at home sort of grinding away at it having the opportunity to talk to a professional artist who's been doing it for years and knows it like the back of of their hand it was it was just awesome i think we had half an hour scheduled and 45 minutes later i thought it, we've only had covered 10 minutes but we've been talking for almost an hour so i absolutely loved it the interview was mostly uh, discussing the portfolio pieces and sort of taking them through a breakdown of my thinking process, how I build scenes, what sort of technologies I use, what my planning is. Um, fairly basic stuff because it, it is a junior position. But yeah, I, I absolutely love this. Uh, and, and yeah, that was that was it. The, the stress of it was much worse than the actual <laughs> interview. I think that's really good as well because it kind of shows that you've come from a self-taught background uh, within art and it just goes to show that you don't always have to go down the normal routes of, of going to uni uh, and taking a course. It, I mean, it is unusual, but, um, you know, it just goes to show that your own hard work has paid off with that. So it's, it's really good to get that insight and you have to spread that a little bit as well. Um, 
Thank you. Um, Jack, so you're coming in as, as, as kind of uh, assistant dev manager and you can give your experiences from a dev manager side of things. Uh, so for me, I would say it was more of a more straightforward uh, uh, process. Uh, I applied for the company. I was, uh, what followed was uh, two interviews, three interviews, I think, and then I was hired. Uh, the preparation for that uh, involved also a lot of rejections by other companies. Uh, but uh, also I would say that I did a lot of preparations, uh, essentially three years in total, to be able to uh, start applying to the video gaming industry. I did that by having some uh, two years of postgraduate studies in a, a relevant field uh, revolving around uh, uh, the video gaming industry. I worked uh, unpaid jobs with uh, some indie uh, projects. And uh, after that, I felt ready that I, I could uh, start uh, sending applications. And uh, so far, that's my role. I think it's uh, very uh, rewarding. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm passionate about video games. So just be able to say, to see that I work around games, it's uh, very fulfilling on its own. And uh, also, uh, because the projects here, it is in the nature of the industry to be uh, uh, for the projects to be very, very fast paced, uh, uh, there is a need for, for it to be, for me to be very agile. So for a manager in general, this is very important. And, uh, and also besides being agile, there is a lot of uh, situational improvised uh, uh, management. And uh, this is good for my critical thinking as well. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I will conclude by saying again that uh, I really love working uh, with video games and uh, uh, any tasks that revolves around the uh, creative decisions, uh, that being uh, uh, reviewing builds or reviewing bugs, uh, it's really the most fulfilling for me. Great, thank you, Jack. Um, Joanna, obviously you can bring a different edge to this. You come in uh, as one of our apprentices um, within Dovetail Games. Um, Talk us through kind of your experiences. Did you just fall into it or was it something that you'd always wanted to do? <laughs> uh, I did kind of fall into it. So I um, finished my A-levels, not August just gone, but the one before that. Um, and I knew that university wasn't for me. I didn't want to move away. And um, for me, there was no course that stood out so much that I wanted to be in like 100 grand's worth of debt. So <laughs> I thought... I'll look for different routes and then I was looking through um, apprenticeship schemes and stuff um, and I came across Dovetail Games um, and I had never thought about an office career um, but I don't know why I didn't because now I've fallen into it I don't see myself at, um, like moving out of working in HR um, and facilities it's just such a great career and there's so much so much that you can do with it and Dovetail Games are so brilliant at like um, pushing and driving people to progress in their career as well. Um, no one is expected to stay at the same level that they come in to the company with. They're always um, promoting and like training employees up. And it just shows by um, introducing like apprenticeship schemes within the company, how much they are passionate about improving their employees. Thanks, Joanna. Helen, you joined us. <laughs> Afraid so. Hello. Sorry, I'm Good. a bit late. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm glad you're here so you can share your experiences. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, that won't take too long. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Helen Dixon. I'm the QA team lead here. Uh, should I talk about what I do? or Yeah, give, uh, give us a rundown of, of what you do and um, how you kind of fell into the games industry or planned coming into the games industry um, and what advice you could give um, to help other people if that's okay please. Of course absolutely so um, as a QA team lead basically what I do is I manage the testing side of things so I have a team of QA technicians who play through our games and they look for bugs and then they log those on our database. Uh, I support them in that role and then I assist with comms. So I communicate with the other departments in the company. Uh, I really enjoy that. Like comms is my passion. Just in case you can't get that from how I can't stop talking. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoy chatting with people. Um, I like networking. Uh, I think that's probably my passion. 
in terms of how I ended up in this role, I think it, for me, at least it came from a passion for games ever since I was little. If any of you are old enough to remember hmm, things like the Sega Mega Drive or the SNES, that was when my real education began. Um, formal education aside, I mean real education, like games education, that's how we started off. <laughs> or with the Amiga, if you're really, if you're really pushing the boat out. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's where my passion for games came about. And I've worked in a variety of roles, but I always knew I wanted to get into the games industry. Um, and I started off in a career of QA a couple of years ago as just a QA technician myself. And then I put a lot of time and effort into that. And um, I was lucky enough to become a, a senior tester. And now I work as this QA team lead and, and I love it. And I guess it's a case of following your passion. My education is actually in Japanese. So that's what I did for, if you're talking about years of student debt, that's where mine went. Um, so it's great at parties, um, being able to speak Japanese, but it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't done a lot <laughs> elsewise. But it, yeah, that, that's how I ended up in QA. Um, and yeah, I love it. It's great fun. And working at Dovetail is a dream come true. Really, my colleagues are incredible. Um, I get a lot of support from everybody. The games uh, are, it's, it's wonderful actually in QA to watch how things develop and how things change. Cause we're really lucky in QA. We see like snapshots of how things are getting better and better all the time. And it's, it's really rewarding, especially if, uh, if I see someone in my team write a bug and then it's fixed and um, I don't know, I look on like a, a proud mother goose in the distance to, to see good work being done. Um, I don't really do any of it, um, the work itself. It's, it's, it's everybody else working hard on it, but it's really very rewarding to see. That's fantastic. Thank you, Helen. You're welcome. Guess what, Nat? <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> um. So I actually have a bit of a story that went along with me getting into the industry. Um, so like uh, a few years ago, I was a trained chef and I was working ridiculous hours um, in like a Michelin star restaurant. And I was like, nope, this isn't for me. Uh, so I walked away from that. Um, and for a while, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, the games industry had never even crossed my mind. So anyway, I um, created a community um, for a game I like. Um, and this community grew to be quite massive. Uh, James will actually know about it um, because it was for RuneScape where he used to work. And basically I gained all these skills um, growing this community because oh, honestly, it's massive now. It's like got nearly a thousand people in it. So anyway, um, I went to a convention around RuneScape and I met some of my community and that's where I met a community manager uh, for RuneScape and I'd never even thought about community management until that day because the community manager saw what I'd done, he saw the group I'd created and he goes, have you ever thought about a career in community management? And this was obviously when I was between jobs. So I was like, no, I haven't. Uh, so anyway, I went um, home after the convention, looked up community management and thought, you know what? this is something I could probably do. So I uh, went for a job with Jagex uh, to try and get a community management job there. And this was the first job I would ever applied to as a community manager. And I got really far down the interview process. Like I surprised myself how close I actually got. Um, didn't get the job, but I saw it as an absolute win because I was like, if I can get that far, on my first interview ever for a community manager. Imagine how I do uh, like trying to get one in a different company. So anyway, um, I then struggled to try and get a job in the industry after that interview because I, I don't know about anybody else, but a lot of entry and junior positions with community management actually expect you to have all these years of experience. And in, in my opinion, entry or junior positions should be zero experience. That's why they're an entry position. So I volunteered my time for Women in Games um, and Women in Games wanted a Discord server built. 
and obviously I had a lot of experience doing this with um, the community I built on Jagged for, for RuneScape. And so um, I had an interview with Gemma about uh, building a Discord for women in games. Well, that was kind of it because me and Gemma really hit it off. And I told her that I was an aspiring community manager. And at the time, Dovetail were looking for a community manager. So she goes, have you thought about applying to Dovetail? And um, I did, and I got the job. And that was that was how I ended up into the industry. But it very much felt like the stars aligned. And then, and then a few months later, James clearly liked me so much that he had to come and work with me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true, James? Absolutely correct. <laughs> um, Angie, we haven't forgotten you. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, I fell into the games industry, um, getting my first job maybe 14 years ago at um, Bethesda as their office manager. And I think uh, what I love about the gaming industry is everyone's passion um, and the continual development in the technology or the way we market games. Um, and... <laughs> I have to confess, I've never played a computer game in my life, <laughs> but I love the industry and the people in it. And for me, this is a dream role because I get to facilitate um, their development um, and help them progress in their careers that they love so much. So for me, it's a very rewarding role. Thank you. That's okay. Um, shall we move on? I'm just aware of the time, so we're at half half past. Um, shall we move on and say about, uh, let's talk about Dovetail as a company and what we love about it. Um, do you want to hit us off again, James? Do you want to start us off? Yeah, I feel like I say something and everyone else says something slightly more eloquent and better, but it's fine. Um, all right. Uh, so Dovetail uh, for me, as I said, as, as uh, Nat sort of talked about some of my previous um, exploits in, in the games industry, um, I've I came to Dovetail about seven months ago um, and I was really, really impressed by a few things, really. Um, that's everything from the commitment to diversity, the commitment to everything that kind of means that everyone kind of has an equal opportunity, an equal chance to, to be successful within the company. That that means a lot to me. And as kind of a community manager who talks to people a lot, it's, it's obviously something that is, is quite important to me. Um, also, the kind of the, the meritocratic side of, of the company, if, if you are good at what you do and you put the work and you put the effort in, you get rewarded. Um, and the, I suppose the final part of it really is having a group of leaders within the company that I could really get behind. Um, I've, my, my boss, um, I actually worked with at Jagex as well. Um, so I knew that she was somebody who was absolutely great at what she does. Um, and that she would absolutely have our back. She's got a background in community as well, which was really important for, for me. Um, and um, that that was a really big thing for me. I, I'd worked in companies before where perhaps um, I hadn't necessarily been on the same wavelength as, as the leaders in the company. Um, and uh, I felt like as soon as kind of I've come here, everything is aligned and that's really, really important for, for myself. I think for a lot of other people within the company as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of have at Dovetail, there's a huge emphasis on the people. Um, as we always say, there's, I think there's always more that we can be doing, but uh, I've never worked for a company that has listened to its staff so much and taken on board um, everyone's opinions and their valued opinions. Obviously, we've been working in a pandemic for the last 18 months. Uh, the offices are open to skeletal staff. Um, the people that are here are working here because they really don't want to, at this time, uh, work alone. We are due to open the office again soon, but uh, the company as a whole had this um, new initiative where we can work where we do our best work. Uh, people got used to working remotely. They wanted to continue to work remotely. Um, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, some people want to work within an office, which some are, as you can probably tell from cameras, um, but we've been listened to. I think there's probably going to be a 70-30 split. 
So 70% that are going to work remotely, 30% within the office. And I, I think that shows how valued we are um, by the company that we've continued to carry on working throughout the pandemic from our homes. We showed that we can do it. And still as a team, we've got it together. So it is great. I've never been somewhere that, that you do feel so valued. Um, who wants to um, be our ambassador for Dovetail Next and say why they love working here and why you should apply now? <laughs> yeah, go on that. So um, one thing um, I've definitely recognised from Dovetail is that um, they're not afraid to give people that first shot in the industry. Um, I've met a lot of people that have said this is their first go. Um, and I think it's because Dove, Dovetail appreciate that people are more than just what is written on their CV. You know, like if, if you'd only looked at my CV and perhaps not my cover letter, um, I wouldn't have been a sensible choice to, to join the industry. Whereas, you know, it's it's evident that, that my other experiences were taken on board when I was hired. And I think that's definitely been the case for other people I've met in the company. So... I think that's something great that Dovetail do. Um, they, they give people that first shot. Mm. That's a really good point. I, I always say do a covering letter, uh, alter your CV, adapt it slightly for whichever role that you are applying for. It does make a difference. Uh, we have a very fair um, recruitment process. Um, we score each candidate, but we take all the information that we've got. We use cover letters, CVs, portfolios, mm -hmm and then um, score people based on what they have given us. Um, so we take into consideration all of it. So yeah, if I've got advice with that, make sure you just adapt that CV and, and write a heartfelt cover letter uh, of why you'd be great at it. It's a really good point. I think that's the same reason that I, I noticed so much um, about joining Dovetail. And, and this is just a snapshot of some of our Dovetail staff and all of you have come through um, a different way of, of coming to, to get the roles that, that you want and to get into the industry. It, no one has the same kind of standard pathway. And in fact, um, on Thursday, we're gonna have um, a few people discuss their career journeys to get to their role um, that will be uh, between five and six, um, just because we have such a diverse background um, of staff at Dovetail. Thanks, Angie. Um, Joanna, tell us why people should apply. What do you like working about here? Oh, what, what going off like what Angie. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> going off what Angie said, I agree because I think for me personally, um, I was taken on due to like my soft skills rather than my like hard skills. Um, so like being like my characteristics themselves are what like earned me my, the job being like trustworthy and like having a willingness to learn and I think if you show that willingness to learn and progress then um dovetail see that in you and then they know that they they have the facilities to train people and no one's perfect when they join especially if you're joining an entry or a junior level they know that you're going to improve over time and that you're gaining experience and then they can mold you to how you they make their gains and how they work best and but they're also um are willing to listen to how you work best and like Fiona said the new um scheme of your base is your space is like amazing and most companies have said after COVID right now we're all back in or now you're all remote but that doesn't work for everyone and Dovetail Games have understood that and have taken into consideration different people's um situations at home and work life and know that that, that won't work for everyone and obviously we've taken on a lot of people in lockdown that um, live further away and that can't now just suddenly get up and move into the office um, but there are also some people that like the people side of like coming in and being able to have that chat at the tea point and make personal connections in the office but I don't I think Dovetail Games have also gone above and beyond and helped those that are further away but still want those relationships with their colleagues and they've put so much in place with um we used to have like friday lockdown drop-ins where people could go on for a chat we have frequent company-wide socials it might just be a quiz um but everyone can get um on board on teams uh, dovetail games are also really good at sending out care packages to their staff um every now and then just to make sure that they're okay we recently had one where we all got sent um a 
cookie in the in the post and then we had like a competition on who could decorate it the best um we've had others where it's been hampers we get christmas gifts and birthday gifts dove kept help do like just go above and beyond to make sure their staff are happy and it shows because a lot of um staff that were here when the company first started are still with us today Thanks, Joanna. That hamper was like Narnia's wardrobe, wasn't it? It was like never ending. You just I think I've still got some of it at home. <laughs> <laughs> it was never ending. Honestly, that was the best. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, just to touch on what you'd said about um, that staff being all over the country, we uh, offer a fully UK-based remote. Um, so I think we're almost at 40% of our staff have never even set foot in the office, which is, yeah, crazy. But it's opened up a whole different pool of candidates that potentially we could have missed before. Um, so it, it's definitely widened the net for us um, in terms of recruitment. Um, Kat, what advice can you give us? <laughs> um, personally, I absolutely love working at Dovetail. Um, I really appreciate how they have uh, mental health first aiders as well as uh, you know your normal uh, first aiders, just because. Um, yeah, mental health is extremely important to uh, acknowledge. Uh, also, just on theme with women in games, uh, being a woman working in this industry, I've uh, really appreciate it as well, uh, because especially after hearing all the controversy with Blizzard across the water, does not reflect on the games industry so well. Games industry and gaming in general is very much, uh, well, male dominated, I would say, or um, perceived to be male dominated. And I think it's like, really good that we can try and, uh, you know, equal it out a bit and <laughs> try and set, show and set a good example of how I accidentally hit mute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a, a space bar. I did mute. I didn't know that. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, it's really great to be able to set that example and work somewhere uh, where and you know support a studio uh, that sets this example uh, and yeah all the members of staff I've worked with have been absolutely lovely and uh, I feel very well supported here uh, I feel like you could also um, learn a lot as well um, yeah we have a lot of social events as well little groups as well um, when we were in the office especially uh, there was like a games night and a train modeling building night and crafts night and uh, yeah they were all just really great ways of meeting people across departments uh, and getting to know everyone so yeah it's just a few things that I love about working here. What do you love about working here Jack? Well um... oh, hang on so I should stipulate Jack White and then Jack A so I say <laughs> Jack White good. there we go. <laughs> Sorry I'll go first um Yes, one of the one of the best things I can say probably is, uh, well, I've been working here in a year and a half, which means I started at the beginning of March, um, which we all know what that means. Uh, I was in the office for about a week and a half before everything ground to a halt, and we were all um, told to go home <laughs> and work from home and set up everything there. And uh, anywhere else, I think that could sound like quite a horrific trial by fire. Um, but here it was really really good all the people I worked with were very supportive and it was a very good with teething issues all the little issues we had along the way getting things ready for working from home more permanently and also the creative team that I work with have always been very supportive um, throughout the entire process and that everyone I work with has, uh, has always been very very helpful with all the things that we do. That's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a massive task for um, the IT department um, to send 130 odd people home with all their monitors, um, computers um, and kind of right there you go work from home. But with the open door policy, it was great because if there were any issues, um, there was always somebody there to help. Um, and I think within each team, um, we've all managed to keep in touch, um, even to the point of you know, within the last year, we've probably taken on 17 new people uh, with replacements and new hires and to have continued to be able to mentor and support people virtually, whole new way of learning. But, you know, it, I think we've pulled it off, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> um, Jack, hey. Hey, uh, I'm there with Jack, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to say something uh, original. I think uh, the, uh, my colleagues already said everything about this issue, that, uh, which is, uh, uh, first of all, that uh, 
Dr. James invested a lot on uh, junior talents, and uh, this is very uh, unique uh, for this industry, uh, as already told. Uh, so, yeah, I would say Dr. Ed is unique in that. And uh, the other thing is that uh, there is a strong sense of community in the company. I remember especially in my first month uh, uh, here that uh, I felt very fearful and uh, you know, making the a good impression to everyone, not asking stupid questions. Uh, but uh, actually, everyone was very supportive and uh, tolerating uh, uh, making mistakes. Uh, that's very important. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, maybe the last thing I, I could say that I have for the company is that uh, this capacity to work remotely, uh, because uh, this is something that uh, is discussed uh, many, many times uh, among uh, the companies too. But I think... Uh, very few actually have adopted a full remote uh, model. So, yeah. Get off the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Adam. Um, I think to give a meta reason uh, as to why I like working for Dovetail, I, of course, agree with everything that's been said and the fact that Dovetail will give a young, well, artist or, or an entry, uh, someone who's applying for an entry position that the uh, will give a chance to that person. But to me, it's the size of the company where it's just big enough to where your job is secure, which isn't always the case uh, in game dev, especially in America. Job security in America, for example, is in game, game dev is, is pretty in uh, a pretty bad state. But it's small enough where you as one person can make an impact in your department. So uh, to give an example in, in environment art, if, if you have a passion for a particular piece of technology or uh, you came up with an idea how to make something quicker and easier, it's feasible for you to speak not just to your senior, but to the lead. The, the company is small enough where you can go up to the lead technical designer and say, look, I came up with this piece of code or this piece of blueprinting. I think it works. Can we implement that? And if it does work and you've you know done a good job, there's a good chance it will. And that is a major impact on on the product. So to me, the feeling that that you do actually make a difference in the company and in your department and in what you do is super important because you're not just one of 500 sort of faceless artists that is just churning out pretty things. Your one thing that you made actually counts. And, and if you put an F, a lot of effort into it and make it really good, it really counts. Uh, so So as someone who really thrives on seeing their work out there being you know played enjoyed by people uh to me that's that's super important and i think that that might be the case for a lot of artists because well artists like making things <laughs> <laughs> that's really good to hear it from that side actually adam so thank you and, um, and adam has actually um put on a couple of training sessions um with other artists um teaching you know some of his passions about certain software uh, which has been amazing, you know, sharing that with other um, artists. That's brilliant. Really good. Um, Helen, do you want to add anything? Well, everyone sort of covered all the topics um, <laughs> very, very eloquently, of course, very nicely. Um, the only thing I was going to add to it was the one thing on top of everything else that I really enjoy working with here is that I feel so comfortable talking to all departments and anybody within all of the departments. So um, I can chat to any of my colleagues throughout Dovetail Games and I feel completely comfortable doing so. Um, I had a, you know, I've had chats with, with all people from from everywhere and everybody just talks to me like a I don't know like a normal person I mean that's <laughs> oh, uh, what, a, what a novel idea really but <laughs> I'm not, uh, clearly I'm not I'm not very used to that but um yeah I everyone's on the same playing field and we're all striving towards like the same goal of producing really good media really good content and we all support each other so it's it's just such a wonderful environment to work in that I feel not only do I feel totally supported but there are times there are times when I can support other people novel as it is but we, we all look <laughs> after one another and, and it's just such a good feeling um yeah. that was the one thing I was going to add 
on top of everything else. <laughs> it's nice to feel supported and, you know, uh, certainly within HR, um, I know that I'm fully supported within uh, the department that I sit in as well, um, which is great. Um, I'm aware that we're almost at 10 to, and does anyone have any questions for us? Feel free to take yourself off mute or just pop them in the chat. I don't know if anyone else wants to fill in something while, while we're uh, waiting to see if there's any questions. I just wanted to add on to what Helen said about um, feeling like she can talk to anyone. Although there is a hierarchy in the company, you don't notice it. So you know who to go to and who your senior person is if you want advice or support. But I would never be phased by talking to someone who's three like times higher up in the company than me. Um, they And if I had something to say or an opinion, they would happily listen and take it on board if it was useful or benefit the company. And also going from an apprentice point of view, there's times where I have to do an assignment and I need um, opinions or information from different departments and other than HR and facilities. And there's not been one time where someone isn't willing to give me half an hour of their time or send me over some information or data that would help me um, improve. And I never thought that would happen in the company. And no one like cares about giving you the slightest bit of time or energy just so that they can see you improve. That's great. Has anyone else got anything to add? Any wise words? I was just going to check, jump in and say, um, I'm not, uh, hopefully the passion in the room has kind of come across over the course of this, uh, this session, but it's great to work with so many people that are either really passionate about the subject matter in which we create our games. Um, we've got so many uh, rail and, and fishing enthusiasts in the company. It's, it's brilliant to be able to kind of get a perspective of people that say, I'm not necessarily one of the, I'm not one of those people by any means, but it's great to be able to get a perspective of those individuals and, and what makes them tick. Um, but also people that are really passionate about their craft, people that are really crash, passionate about what they do, how they do it, um, and um, being able to kind of and yeah, to use a 21st century vibe off of them is great because uh, it's uh, it's it's infectious and that's really really good to, to to be able to kind of build out creativity to be able to build out productivity um, and effectiveness as well and that's a really 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 I think important thing to have within a company that uh, is the size of, of Dovetail is at the moment. And, and I think this is why we do these kind of events as well. Um, we don't mind if there's one person, we don't mind if there's a hundred people. Uh, just the fact that people want to listen to us talking passionately about what we do. And if we can in help and inspire just one person, then we've kind of done our job in, in getting someone else into the games industry. So this is why we do this. Anyone else wants anything? I was just going to say, if you don't know what route you want to take, but you know you want to get in the games industry, send out speculative applications to as many companies as you can. Just get your name out there. But like Fiona said, make sure you adapt your CV to that company. Don't just send a blanket CV out there. Show your personality. All of our speculative applications get assessed. Uh, we keep a, um, a talent pool um, of all of us people that apply, uh, and we do call them up if, if a position comes up that matches their skill set as well. So 100% apply, even if you don't see what you're looking for. So from, right. from my experience as well, I, I would say like don't, um, don't underestimate things you can do in your spare time before you're trying to get in the industry as well. Like I said, the core of my experience was in my spare time playing a game I liked. Um, so so if, I would say like just look for other opportunities even if you're struggling to get in the industry volunteer places where you can and stuff like that I think that's definitely useful um and if you do get to interview always always ask for feedback if you're unsuccessful because it's just so valuable um yeah and and if you get to interview I'd say see that as a win in itself because it's, it's not even easy to get to interview sometimes great well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time today. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, and just remember, you can watch yourselves back on the video when it goes out at the Women in Games conference over the next two days. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.